Hi, I'm Mike, founder of GoodBed.com. Today we're here to review the Cocoon mattress from Sealy, uh, which we're excited about because this is the first time we're reviewing a bed that is from one of the major traditional uh, mattress brands. Um, and so this is Sealy's uh, foray into the kind of online bed in a box space. It's a memory foam mattress, uh, memory foam over foam construction, and uh, we're excited to show it to you. So let's start out by just talking a little bit about what's actually in this mattress. And it turns out that the firm model and the soft model aren't quite the same. So uh, we've got them both here and we've opened them both up so you can see the difference. Um, let's start with the firm model, which on the top has a two inch layer of memory foam. And it's a very slow responding memory foam, as you can see here. Um, and then below that, you just have an eight inch polyurethane core. So that's it, it's a very simple two layer construction there. Um, and then on the soft model, you have that same layer of slow responding memory foam on top, and you have a, that same polyurethane core on bottom, but in between, you have a two inch layer of, uh, like a transition layer of polyurethane foam. And it's softer, it's certainly softer than the polyurethane core, and maybe even softer than the memory foam. Um, and and the, the role that this plays is it is actually what gives the soft model its softer feel because as you sink through the memory foam, you don't just hit the firm polyurethane core, you first hit this softer layer of foam and so that gives you a little bit more of that um, feeling of sort of sinking into the mattress a little bit more and, and feeling that sense of softness to it. Um, so those are the differences. Now in terms of the densities, Sealy doesn't actually provide any information from what we've been able to find uh, about the densities. So we've had to kind of do our own sort of sleuthing to figure out the densities. The best we can determine is that the density of the top layer of memory foam is something around three pounds, but we don't know that for a fact. Um, and it looks like the density of the polyurethane core they're using is around two pounds. Um, but again, that's not something we've been able to verify. So one of the things we really like about the Cocoon mattress from Sealy is that it comes in two different softness levels, the firm and the soft, both of which we have here. Um, and a lot of people have asked us, like, why didn't Sealy come out with a medium? You know, why only have the two extremes? Um, and now that we've had a chance to try them, we really kind of understand more where they were coming from, which is that these two mattresses are not nearly as far apart in terms of softness level as their names may uh, lead you to believe. We might characterize in terms of just the straight up softness level, uh, this mattress as being somewhere between a medium firm and maybe a firm. Uh, and this mattress here might be somewhere between medium firm and medium. Um, so they're, they're not far apart in terms of their softness level. And when you look at the, um, the way they were constructed as we covered earlier, um, you can understand why that would be the case. The top two inches of both of these mattresses, which always has a lot to do with how soft they feel, is exactly the same. The only difference, in fact, between these two mattresses is the layer uh, between two and four inches below the surface, which here is softer than here. Um, and so what really that results in, in more so than softness feel, is like a cushioning depth difference. Um, so you do get a little bit of a difference in the sort of overall softness and feel, but you get more of a pronounced difference in the cushioning depth, which in our terminology is a little bit of a separate factor from softness. Um, so, so those are the softness options that are available here. So now let's start to get into some of the things that determine what types of sleepers would be the best match for this mattress. And when we start that conversation, we always start with the two things that everybody has to get from their mattress, which are back support and pressure relief. So we're looking at back support first, and I think that since we have the two comfort levels here side by side, it's really easy to break this down for you. Um, this is the firm and this is the soft. And what you'll notice is like, if I go here on my stomach on the firm, um, there's only two inches of memory foam here, below which is just a eight inch block of polyurethane foam. And my back is totally fine. I'm supported, I'm not, uh, hammocking, which can be a really devastating thing when you're on your stomach. Um, so I would definitely suggest that the firm is the right position for you 
uh, or, or sorry, is the right model for you if you are predominantly a stomach sleeper. Um, but if I go on my side, for example, on this model, you might notice that um, my shoulders don't have enough opportunity to sink into the mattress in order to keep my, the top of my spine straight. Instead, it's got a little up tilt, which is common on a firm mattress, which is why uh, side sleepers don't generally opt for firm mattresses. Whereas if I switch over to this version, it's much straighter. So to me, it's very clear that if you're a side sleeper, you're gonna wanna opt for the soft version. If you're a stomach sleeper, you're gonna to wanna to go with the firm version. If you're a back sleeper, I actually think either of these could work for you. It's more a matter of your personal preference. As we mentioned earlier, the comfort differences are not super great. Um, what you notice more is the amount of depth that you sink in um, on, the, on the soft version. But uh, so it's more of a matter of, do you like to be kind of hugged by your mattress or do you like to float on top of it? Um, but I think either one would probably provide you with adequate back support. So now let's talk about pressure relief. And when you think about pressure relief, you generally wanna be on your side because that's the position in which pressure points are most common. Um, and we've already talked about how the firm model is really not an ideal fit for a side sleeper. And another reason for that would be that when you're on your side on the firm model, you're very likely that your shoulders are gonna kind of bottom out on that two inch layer of memory foam which means that you'll basically be getting pressure relief from that eight inch polyurethane core layer, which is very firm and not gonna provide you with the same kind of caliber of pressure relief that, that the memory foam will. Uh, so where I am now is I'm on the soft model. And what you can see here is that uh, on this model, even with my shoulder pressing into the mattress, I'm now, uh, I'm still not getting to the polyurethane core. I'm getting more to that transition layer, which is softer, and it's allowing still the, the memory foam on top to do, be doing its job. Um, and I'm definitely feeling like this, uh, in this position, I'm still getting great pressure relief from, from this particular model. So again, I would say if you're a side sleeper, this is yet another reason to go with the softer model. Okay, so now let's dive into some of the more preference-based criteria when choosing a mattress. And the first one we'll start with is what we call responsiveness, which is our fancy way of describing uh, the difference between memory feel on the one hand versus bounciness on the other. Uh, and in this case, this mattress clearly falls towards the memory feel side of that spectrum. Uh, we showed you the layers and we, when we did so, we described the slow responding nature of that top two inches. It is truly slow and we've measured it at uh, about 10 seconds that it takes when you press down on it or squeeze it for it to return to its shape. So, I mean, that is extremely slow as memory foams go. So if you enjoy that slow responding feeling of memory foam, you're definitely gonna get a healthy dose of that on this mattress. That being said, one of the complaints we hear from some people as it relates to memory foam mattresses is that they have sort of almost a dead feeling when you bounce down on them. Um, and in this particular case, there, uh, we, we haven't actually experienced that. And I, what I can do is I can actually show you with this bowling ball uh, that there's definitely a bit of bounce um, in this mattress, more so than you would expect from most memory foam mattresses. And that has everything to do with the fact that this mattress only has two inches of memory foam which really is about the minimum that we would uh, consider for this to be a memory foam mattress in our definition. Um, so as a result, you know, what's underneath has a little bit more bounce and that's what you're experiencing when you, when you kind of drop a bowling ball on it or plop down on it yourself. So that's the overall sense of this mattress in terms of its responsiveness. So the next preference-based criteria we're gonna discuss is cushioning depth which again is something where there's no better or worse, there's just uh, deeper cushioning or shallower cushioning and it's really your personal preference as to what you prefer. And in this case, the two softness options that are provided by Sealy actually offer two different cushioning depths as well. Um, in fact, they differ a little bit more on their cushioning depth than they do on their softness per se. Um, so oftentimes we demonstrate the cushioning depth with this bowling ball um, to show you the differences. 
And you can sort of see a little bit of the uh, cushioning depth differential with this bowling ball. If I roll it, uh, it's now on the firm side. And you can see it's sinking just a little bit less into the uh, mattress than it does on the on the deeps on the soft side. But unfortunately, I think that this bowling ball isn't quite heavy enough to really illustrate the key differences here. Um, so I think I'll just have to demonstrate it with my body, um, and I'll show you. I'll tell you that what I think this uh, firm model represents in terms of cushioning depth is what I would consider to be pretty shallow cushioning. So this is going to be a great fit for somebody who really likes to feel sleeping on their mattress um, as opposed to in their mattress. So sort of floating on top and definitely not being cradled by your mattress or, or hugged. Um, whereas if I were to be over on the uh, soft model, I would say this is, has a lot more of that feeling of being cradled by your mattress. It still is not something that I would consider to be like a deep level of cushioning. I'd say this is more of a medium level of cushioning. Um, but definitely a lot more of that sort of feeling of, of being uh, cradled by your mattress. Okay, so now we're going to shift gears into talking about some of the more priority-based criteria. And what we mean by that is these are things that mattresses can be better or worse at that may or may not be a priority for you. And the first of those is motion isolation, which you may know is just how much uh, your one side of the mattress feels what's happening on the other side. We're going to demonstrate this with a little bowling ball demonstration. And you can see here that the bowling pin barely moves. And that's of course because, for one thing, memory foam is generally a good shock absorber. And for another thing, a polyurethane foam core generally does not transfer a whole lot of motion either. So if motion isolation is important to you, you're generally going to be very well served on this mattress. The next thing we're going to talk about is ease of repositioning. And if you're someone for whom this is an issue, uh, then you may be aware that memory foam sometimes gets complaints about this. And you may be particularly concerned when you heard about the slow responding nature of the memory foam in this mattress. Um, but what I can tell you is that when I move around on this mattress, there's no question that it is more difficult to move around than it is on, say, a latex mattress or something like that, where there's a very quick responding comfort layer on top. But at the same time, it's not nearly as hard as you might expect given the slow responding nature of this memory foam. And that has everything to do with the fact that there's only two inches of memory foam in this mattress. So as a result, you're not getting quite as much of that feeling of digging out of a hole when you try to move from one place to another. Another consideration you may have when choosing a mattress is temperature. And what we mean by that is that your body may not actually feel the same temperature on every mattress. And this is an issue that's a particular concern when it comes to memory foam mattresses because uh, one of the drawbacks of their conforming nature, which has many benefits as well, but one of those drawbacks is that your body, less of your body's surface area is actually exposed to the air around it and therefore less of it can expel heat. It's not surprising because of that that Sealy has come up with um, a way of addressing this concern when it comes to their cocoon line. And they've done that through offering a chill upgrade. Um, and the chill upgrade is essentially a different cover. Uh, and we've got it actually on this model. So this, this model has the chill cover, this model has the regular cover. And the chill cover basically has phase change material in it, which is meant to give it sort of a coolness to the touch. Um, and the Coolness is definitely something you can feel when you touch it, um, especially if you kind of know to be looking for it. Um, but at the same time, I would say it's not nearly as striking a difference as I would have expected. Um, I've felt demos of, of these types of phase change materials before, and the difference is typically really striking, where you, you're like, wow, you put your hand in one side that doesn't have it, and one side that does. Uh, this is not the case where it's not nearly so dramatic. And in fact, when we put a sheet uh, across these two things and tried to tell the difference, it was even harder to tell the difference between the two sides. So I was expecting just a little bit more, especially considering the $150 uh, price difference for the chill upgrade. Um, now that being said, the, uh, the memory foam in this particular model, the firm model, 
uh, is not going to be as conforming as other memory foam mattresses because of the fact that there's very little cushioning depth. So I think that you're less likely to have temperature issues on this model than on some memory foam mattresses as a result of that. Whereas this softer model would be maybe more typical of memory foam mattresses um, because of the fact that your body is sinking in deeper into the memory foam. The next consideration we're going to discuss is edge support, which in general tends to be a weak point for most foam mattresses. Um, as you can see here, I'm sitting on the edge here, and, and no, no question, I'm sinking quite a bit on this edge, uh, mostly very compressed. But I think where the uh, weakness in edge support comes more clear is when I actually lay on the edge. And I always try to get my shoulder blade just right over the edge. And as I just sit here, I have this distinct sensation that I'm sliding off the side and like maybe even I'm continuing to slide because as the memory foam responds to my body, I sink deeper and deeper. So it's just sending me slowly off the edge. <laughs> but again, that's only if you're, it's a rather extreme test that I'm doing here to, to lay exactly on the edge. So I only point it out to the extent that for whatever reason, that's where you like to sleep. Another consideration you may have uh, is natural materials, or maybe more acutely, it's just the lack of possibly harmful materials in your mattress. And uh, so in this particular mattress, it's not made with any natural materials. However, what we can say is that they did have the foam in this mattress certified to the CertiPure standard, which is a standard that looks for harmful materials in the foam and certifies that there are none that exceed some minimally acceptable threshold. So that is certainly some reassurance you could take as it relates to that consideration. When you buy a mattress online, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to consider is the return policy, because you won't have a chance to try it before you buy it. So with the Cocoon line, Sealy offers a 100-night in-home trial uh, with free returns. So basically, if you're unhappy for any reason, you're able to return it and get a full refund. Now you do have to prove that you donated it or something along those lines. There's a, a few different processes that they offer. Um, so there's a little bit of work required on your end, which is typical amongst a lot of these online companies. But it is a full refund and a no questions asked return policy. Uh, and one thing that's an additional note with Sealy that I think you can take some extra comfort in is that they've offered 24 seven phone support which is truly unique amongst these online companies we can attest to. Um, and we can also imagine that for a lot of people, problems with their mattress aren't necessarily going to arise during nine to five business hours. So it's going to be some amount of reassurance that you can reach Sealy anytime, day or night. One criteria that's important to just about every mattress shopper is value. When we think about value, we usually think about what it costs, what's in it, and how long we think it's going to last. In terms of what it costs, the Cocoon from Sealy will run you $699 in a queen size for the standard version and an additional $150, so $849 for the chill version. Uh, in terms of what's in it, we talked about the, the foam construction earlier. Um, we would add that the cover is a, is a nice stretch cover that's solidly constructed and I think will hold up well over time. I think where we have Potentially some concerns is just in the densities of the foams, which again, weren't provided by Sealy, so we had to sort of make some um, assessments on our own where we had to try to make some determinations. And uh, our, our thought was that the top layer of memory foam was about three pound density. Um, and that's on the low side for sure. So I'd have some concern, it's not guaranteed to happen, but I'd have some concern that that foam might soften over time much more quickly than, say, a, a, le a higher density memory foam would. Um, the polyurethane core, on the other hand, is a two pound density, or again, so we think, uh, which is on the higher side for a polyurethane core. That being said, polyurethane cores don't usually go as high as two inches from the surface of the mattress. So um, you're gonna see more compression in that polyurethane core on this mattress than you would on another mattress. Um, and in the soft version, you know, you have that transition layer, which again, we think is somewhere in the two pound-ish density. So you'd have that same sort of uh, concern potentially as it relates to density. All that though can be certainly mitigated to a degree by the fact that this is a mattress made by Sealy, 
which is a company that's been around a long time, um, has been making mattresses a long time. And I think if anyone can figure out how to make a mattress with slightly lower density uh, foams that's gonna last just as long, it's probably a company like Sealy. Um, and more than anything, you're gonna know with a lot of certainty uh, with Sealy that they're a company who's gonna be around the entire lifespan of this mattress. Uh, which probably is not something you could say for every one of the online mattress companies out there. So uh, that certainly again is something you could take a lot of reassurance about when it comes to thinking about warranty protection and things of that nature. Um, the only other thing we'd add as it relates to the value side of this is that the, um, the chill version at $150 premium seems um, potentially like a, like a high level of premium given the amount of temperature differential we're able to perceive, but at the same time, uh, I'm not someone who has a propensity to sleep hot, so I, I can't say with certainty that that wouldn't be well worth it for someone who does have a propensity to sleep hot. Just to sum up some of the things we've talked about here today, the Sealy Cocoon mattress is a memory foam mattress that offers a lot of those well-known benefits of memory foam, including the pressure relief, the conforming characteristics, the motion isolation. We've talked about how obviously if you're someone who doesn't like that memory feel or you're looking for a really bouncy mattress, then this isn't the right choice for you. Uh, likewise, if you're someone for whom edge support is a critical consideration, then this probably isn't the ideal mattress. Um, I would even go so far as to say if you're someone who has a very strong tendency to sleep hot during the night, I'm not sure whether the chill cover will be sufficient to keep you cool during the night, particularly on the soft version of this mattress. But if you're someone who really likes that extra slow responding memory foam that we showed you in this video, then we definitely think this is an interesting choice for you. What we think is most interesting about it is that this is the first time we've seen one of the major traditional mattress brands delve into the online mattress world. And in doing so, they're offering the same quality of uh, return policy that the other online mattress players have, have offered. Um, and I think what's unique is that, you know, your mattress is a purchase that you expect to keep for a while, maybe 10 years or so. And so you certainly ideally want the company you bought it from to also be around for 10 years or so. And with the case of Sealy, this is a company that's been around for generations. And you can be very uh, assured that they're gonna be around in 10 years. And that may or may not be the case with some of these online companies. So if you are someone who is looking for a little extra reassurance on that front, then I think that there's definitely value in the Sealy name on this mattress. So we hope you found this video helpful in determining whether the Cocoon by Sealy mattress is the right mattress for you. If you're still not sure though, we would definitely urge you to go to goodbed.com and take our mattress match quiz, which you can find right up in the header of any page of our website. This quiz will walk you through all the same criteria and considerations that we covered in this video, and ultimately will show you the mattresses that best match your needs and preferences, both online as well as in the local stores in your area. And after you've taken the quiz, you can visit this page for any model on Goodbed or brand, including Cocoon by Sealy, and get your personal match score for that product. So that's it. We thank you for watching, and we hope you sleep well. Thank you.